so it's early. I just got up and I'm tired. But it dawned on me that we've never had a review of the new Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0. Let's get to work. Andrew here. Welcome back to Work the Trigger. There's a couple of reasons that we haven't reviewed the MMP 2.0 yet. I told you it was early. So the first reason is because I haven't carried it all that much yet. And I really think that to get a good idea of a carry gun, since it is a carry gun, I got the compact version, you should really carry it. <sighs> I forgot something. I swear, I'm gonna get out of here eventually. The second reason is because I took like a three month break. Uh, 7.59. Thank you. So what do I think of the MMP 2.0? If you know what I think of the Shield 1.0 and the MP 1.0, probably a little bit worried right now. Uh, which is fair because I do not like those guns. And I will tell you why right after it is light enough that I can actually talk to you guys without lights and weird shadows. Well, it's a little bit lighter out. So the things that I didn't like about the first one were primarily the feel. Um, it just didn't feel right. Any of it. The grip, the trigger, it was all bad. And like, we all know the problems with the original one. I hate the post office. Gritty triggers. And the texture on the grip is almost laughable. Smith has done a lot to fix a lot of that. Also, mid-video wardrobe change. And the majority of the issues that I had with the original MMP are now gone. So now I feel like I can give you guys an adequate portrayal of what I think of this gun without being fully jaded because I have carried it quite a bit now. Let me get you back on here. So what do I think of it? It's pretty nice. Gone is the horrible grip texturing. We now have what is actually a really, really rugged, really rough grip texturing that holds the gun firmly in your hand. Gone is the horrible hinged trigger. It is still primarily plastic, so we get a little bit of that grip, but the grit in the trigger now is significantly reduced. Not only is the grip reduced, but you get a lot better angles from pulling on it because you're not dealing with the hinge design. With this one, which is the newest version of the 2.0, uh, you get suppressor height sights, you get an optics cut along with a plate system that goes on here. The plate system is plastic. I don't like that a whole lot, but I've not had any opportunities to really check on it. I have heard of screws loosening and backing out on these particular particular guns. Again, I haven't had any experience with it, but that does make sense since plastic is typically compressible, which means that you're going to get a little bit more shift in your optic, which can work those screws out over time. The new version has ambidextrous slide stop slide release. You still have those awesome wave cut serrations. And honestly, this is everything that I wanted the original M&P to be. So let's talk about shootability a little bit now. The shootability of the new 2.0 is drastically improved, primarily because of the grip and the trigger. It is amazing how much those two things handicapped the original M&P so badly. So also now gone is that weird combination of sizes that the original M&P compact had. Now we get a true compact size 15 round magazine to fit right in line with all of the other compact offerings. It just makes more sense. So how does it add up to the other compacts on the market? Um, in some cases better, in some cases not better, which makes sense obviously ergonomics significantly better than something like a glock glock is typically looked at as pretty unergonomic anyway feeling more like a brick in your hand than a well-formed well-designed firearm uh, the mmp doesn't have that it fits wonderfully i wouldn't put it any better or worse than my carry gun the p10c felt recoil is a little bit higher just because it does have a little bit higher of a bore axis and your undercut here on the back side is a little bit lower than other guns like the p10 uh, meaning that you can't get quite as high of a grip now with that being said though even with a little bit more felt recoil, it actually stays in your hand better. And I'll tell you why. And the answer why is that's wet. Sorry, um, it's that's not the answer. Uh, it's been raining and I forgot about that. The answer why is grit um, or roughness, sandpaper, whatever you want to call it. 
The grip texturing on the MMP is so superior to a gun like the Glock that even with its increased, slightly increased recoil impulse, it still stays planted better. Now, how does that compare with something like the Walther PDP, for instance? Um, the Walther PDP has pretty good grip texturing. It is comfortable, but not overly grippy, but it's got a very high bore axis. And I will say that Smith did it a little bit better than the PDP did. Their grip texturing was a little bit more aggressive. Their height over bore wasn't quite as much, so you don't have quite as much mass up there. And honestly, it just recoils a little bit less. <laughs> So where does that line up with the other things that I carry? For instance, I carry my P10C, I carry my P365, the standard and the macro. And honestly, the Smith is one of the only other guns that is in the same size area as my P10C that I'll actually carry on a normal basis. It carries really well, it's just a good size. And in my Harry's Holster Singleton, it is one of the guns that almost melts away into nothing. And what is better than carrying 15 rounds and almost forgetting about it? So then why is it not my primary carry gun? And the answer to that is both simple and difficult. Dad tax, Halloween candy, you know how it is. So the reason it's not my primary carry gun is one, comfort. I'm just more comfortable with my P10C. I've used it a lot more. Uh, my competition gun reflects what my carry gun is, and I don't have a dot with this one. And although I'm a heck of a lot better shooter with irons than I used to be, I'm still extremely confident with the dot, and I like the speed. And lastly is, and don't get your panties up in a ruffle just yet, Smith guys, accuracy. I don't mean this in some mean way against Smith & Wesson. Um, it's actually a pretty darn accurate gun. The problem is my CZs are just more accurate. The Smith for me beats out both Glock and Sig in accuracy. It's just, it's really difficult to beat the accuracy of CZ. And I just haven't gotten over that yet. So although I love my Smith & Wesson, the odds of it becoming my primary carry gun are pretty small. Not until maybe I replace the barrel with something that's a little bit more accurate or, or get like a five inch version to be able to shoot some competitions with to really be able to get the versatility of the platform. For as much as I like the P10 series, the Smith has just as much going for it. So I don't do rating systems on my channel, never have, probably never will because honestly, who can put a number on this kind of thing? However, I can get you a quick short pros and cons. The pros of the Smith are what it comes with. It comes with optics, plates, and suppressor height sights. The price is pretty good. I'll put that uh, here because they don't really like me saying it a whole lot. It's definitely competitive and it feels great in your hand. The cons, the trigger is still not great. It's significantly better than it was, but you still get a little bit of that plastic grit. It does have a little bit more felt recoil and your accessories aren't going to be as widespread. However, you can grab the Singleton holster at Harry's Holsters and by using the code work the trigger, you can get 10% off. So would I recommend the Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0 Compact? That is a mouthful. Two people who ask me about new guns, Absolutely, I would. I do think it's a quality firearm. I don't have any concerns with safety issues like I do with, say, the P320. It is a more universal size than something like the PDP, and I think that it is more universally comfortable than the Glock. And even against my P10C, you're gonna have an easier time finding parts for it. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. If you like this and you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button over on that side. If you wanna help the channel out a little bit, you can become a channel member right here on YouTube or you can head over to variantinnovation.com. That's where you can find our 3D printed gun accessories. Thanks guys, I appreciate every one of you. And until next time, do your research, get informed and get to work. Mm -hmm.